Make a million cash for you flatline Make a master plan, watch it backfire Burn it all down and collect the ashes Build it back, respect your passion Witness to some shit that you shouldn't see Whisper to yourself what you wouldn't be Victim to the block where your mama moved It's your boy Zay and we back with another, another podcast Official Site Fashion where we talk fashion, financial literacy, and mindset And you know who I'm with again What's up guys, it's your boy Zion Back again with another episode of Official Site Fashion Where it's fashion, financial literacy, and mindset Through the lenses of young creators and entrepreneurs Yes sir and Today we bring to you another dope young creative and entrepreneur We have Miss Delaney Latif which is a fashion enthusiast, a fashionista, whatever you want to call her. She specializes in doing fashion videos, try on hauls, look books, and et cetera. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How y'all doing today? Good. I just want to say we appreciate you for being on this platform. And I know this is going to be a great podcast. Like, so thank you mm-hmm. for being on here. Yes, thank you. Of course. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get this one off. Yeah, so man. I found Delaney on my Instagram, right? Right. I was scrolling, I was scrolling her wheels pop up. She's doing the flip book and she's real stylish. And I think Ooh. I'm in a fashion block. I recognize when someone like really know what they're doing okay. when it comes to fashion block. And I just felt like she was doing a great job with what she was doing. So right. I should have done the podcast. And I see she attends North Carolina ANC University. I wanted to say this, right? Because I kind of wanted to speak on like uh, the fact on HBCU campus because I go to HBCU as well, uh, Benedict College, and like the fashion on HBCU campus is definitely an emphasis, right? And NCAT is like prolific for uh, HBCU fashion. And HBCU Spirit was founded right up, like right up the street at Winston Salem State, I believe. So, okay, mm-hmm. how do you think about HBCU fashion culture as a whole, Delaney? And like, how do you think it uh, influenced you once coming to HBCU? Um, so personally to me, um, A&T is full of drip. Okay. So when I say full of drip, it's like, it's, to me, it's, um, to me, it's drip, fashion, and style. So those are the three three tiers to all this. Um, A&T is full of drip. Drip is basically, you know, designer, you know, you you might, you put all these designer pieces on, but you ain't really did nothing to do it. You just bought it to say you got a name to make you feel like, you know, yeah. But I don't really see much fashion and style on campus, but it's a whole, my HBC culture has influenced my style and my fashion personally because um, this has allowed me to be around a lot more creatives. Being around a lot more creatives has allowed for me to like express myself a lot better from being like back home in Greenville, South Carolina, as y'all know, because it ain't much there. And as a entrepreneur in the fashion industry, I did my research and it said that the fashion industry doesn't have a diversity problem, but they more so have a black problem. So that being said, do you believe that us black people, we should use our own platforms and use our own skills instead of just trying to get into fashion like this industry? Because you're doing a very good job of doing it just by yourself. Um, yes, I do. I I believe that us as like African Americans, blacks, I think that we should go on the whole look into our own fashion weeks, look into our own types of things when it comes to fashion um I'm really like I feel like there should be more HBCU like you know we have HBCU drip and all this stuff but I feel like it should be more things like catered around like maybe an HBCU fashion show like centered around the fashion from different HBCUs but in like one central place like all coming out to see different things because there's lots of like creatives and everything at these different schools so I believe that yes, we should have different black like black spaces for our black fashion because a lot of this stuff that's today is from us. So yeah, most of the like fashion culture derives from us. So like speaking of fashion, like when did you first get into fashion? Like what was your fashion influence? Like this is something I want to grow into. This is something I want to take serious. It's something I want to implement to my daily life. How I dress and how I put things together. So like when did that first start for you? Um. So. <laughs> 
when I was younger, I used to hate clothes. I used to hate shopping. I used to hate everything about it. And every weekend, my mom, my grandma, and my aunt would take me <laughs> to stores, like, every weekend. When I say every weekend, like, every weekend, like, they'll just be, um, they'll have me out all day. They used to, like, dip my closet out, like, you know, I was a fine little girl, cool, whatever. But it wasn't really with my fashions now, if that makes sense. Like, now, like, I'm like, okay, I know what I want to look like. But over time, it definitely grew from, like, my grandma and my mama and my aunt. Like, my classic style definitely stems from them and made me want to get into fashion. Classic style? What, how, like, what other words? Just classic? What else? Like to describe my style, um, I don't know, cause I'm really I'm real all over the board. Cause one day I might want to look like Erica Badu, one day I might want to look on the Chanel runway, one day I might want to just look real preppy, one day I might want to look real girly. Like it just never really ceases to amaze me, but it's always gonna have something in there that is me, if that makes sense. Well, it's like more of like a feeling. Cause like when I get up and put clothes in the morning, it's just like more based on how I'm feeling. Like do I feel yeah. like, or this way together? I'm just gonna chill today. Yeah, type shit. So it yeah. sounds like it's more of a feeling when it comes to that. And you like styling like your own stuff. Have you ever been like your own worst critic? Like you know, let's put this into example. Like we all know like the story of like the H and M of like the black boy like wore the hoodie of the coolest monkey like in the jungle, and everybody was criticizing. But really, like that was just a fashion, just like in general. So, have you ever been like your own worst critic when it comes to styling, or just styling like just women, or like just styling like just others? Um, yes. Um, <laughs> so like, I um, let's see. So, being my own worst critic definitely came into play when I was doing my reels. So. I was doing, the time I did my reels, I did reels for 31 days of December. Like I had like different outfits, different looks type of thing for 31 days of December. Like that was the hardest thing like I've ever done for myself. Like I'm putting myself out there on a platform and it was just like a first time thing. Yes, um, I beat myself up a lot of those days. Like <laughs> I was like, I would literally like wake up. I was like, okay, I need I need a better outfit than yesterday. Like it's always I need to be better than yesterday. I need better than yesterday. And in fashion, that can become tiring, hard. You be spending a lot of money that you don't need to spend. Like it's just unnecessary sometimes. And I'm big on like recycling and stuff. So I was trying to keep in rotations of the same clothes, but. You know, when you're trying to look like somebody new, you're trying to give them different different vibes, different feels or whatever. You got to keep going. Like, you got to keep shooting for the stars. But it's okay because next 31 days of December, it's going to be on and popping, like, planning it now. Because that was definitely two weeks. And that was a week in advance before I even just started doing that. I was just like, okay, I'm going to do it. So I was watching, like, your reels and, like, your TikTok, you know, like, as well. Because me and Z, we, um, we tapped into the reels and we even had a we've been having like problems of getting our, our platform like you know like sub, just public so what type of like advice would you recommend as the thumbnails and trying to get yourself like just out there because you're doing a very great job like your like reels is very like it's creative and it's styling like so what type of points can you give me and z and what type of and what type of points can you give like the audience you know like this as well um wow <laughs> Um, that's so funny that even y'all asking me because I'm just here to say like I just be going with the flow. <laughs> I'm going with the flow of all of this. Um, literally with my reels, so all my reels are made on TikTok first. I I don't know how to make Instagram reels on Instagram besides making a TikTok and then putting them on there. Um, I am learning a lot more things on that, so hopefully I'll be better soon. But um. As far as like transitions and things go, like I really, really like took time. I was like looking up different transitions, looking up how they did, like did the different transitions. A lot of that does take practice, like, cause a lot of it is editing as well. And a lot of people, like if you got a good camera, 
you can do a lot of this stuff outside of um like your phone or whatever and then just edit it and then put it on your phone which is what a lot of people do nowadays when it comes to doing like tiktoks reels and everything which is kind of cool but i don't know not everybody has those privileges <laughs> but you can definitely film it before and then like kind of piece it together so that's one way I do it. As far as like thumbnails and things like that go, um, Canva is like my biggest, my biggest thing. Like I love Canva. Like you can get a full time subscription on Canva. You might be in there. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> you said you started like doing the the, uh, the thirty one fit in December. So like, was that your first time like putting yourself out there and like uh, creating content based around fashion? Because I see you also. Have a YouTube channel when I was, when I was like seeing your first video, it was July 9th, 2021. So, like, how has your journey been on social media and like overall? Like, have you always been confident in putting yourself out there, or was it something you had to go into? So, um, to answer the question about 31 days, that wasn't the very first time because actually, actually, in 2020. It was around the time I had one of my first videos on YouTube. That was the first time I really fully ever put myself out there. But um, the 31 days was the first time I ever put myself out there like continuously like that. And it is very hard for me because, uh, you know, like the world we live in today, like I, I got some heavy hitters around me. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I got some heavy hitters around me and like, it's just, that's when I really do start becoming my own worst critic once again. Like, it's just a lot going on around me. So I pride myself on the moments when I do take a chance or take a leap and do something I'm not used to doing. So yeah, that was my first time and it still is hard for me, but I'm trying to like build momentum and this, these momentums or these trials and tribulations are going to get me where I want to be in about what, five years. Um, what do you see yourself in the next five years? Like, what's your big goal with fashion? Or like, what, what necessarily are you trying to do? Or do you even see yourself being within the fashion world in the next five years? Um, actually, I do. Um, I see myself working with like, I'm gonna give it like, I want to stop people for big events. Let's say that. Um, I want to work with people, like, say if someone's going to a gala, I only want to stop people for big events. I used to want to get into, like, doing people's closets and things, but that's really hard. Like, styling people for every day, people don't really take that seriously. Like, I could do it, but I really want to stop people for major events. I want to get deep into archives, like, vintage pieces when it comes to, like, high-end vintage pieces. Um... I just want to dig into archives with like people and just allow for me to create my vision on them. And if you don't mind me asking, because I'm lost, like, so what is like the archive though? So, okay, um, I'm just use like a broad example. So, everybody knows Chanel. Chanel is old, <laughs> Chanel's an old brand, but a lot of stuff like today that people are getting, like, Vintage, vintage Chanel, those are, those are like archive pieces. Those are pieces you're not going to walk into Chanel and see. This is like true vintage or even Emilio Pucci, like true, true vintage like pieces. And they make stuff today, but it's not what they used to make. And that's what people are not sort of in love with more, the retro, the vintage of it. So like, what are, your summer, what are some of your favorite fashion brands to shop with or like you would like to style people with? Um, I'm gonna be honest. I'm really like right now. I'm trying to expand like my brands because, like I said, I do. I like a lot of vintage, so a lot of stuff I get is thrifted. Um, as far as like I love thrifting, so as far as like little like pieces to add to my clothes, like it can be from somewhere simple like Forever Twenty One and stuff like that. And I mean, that's nothing like, that's just simple stuff. But as far as like my favorite, like one of my top brands right now, I really love Zara. Like Zara is like 
10 out of 10 for me. <laughs> I literally love Zara. I, I buy so much out of Zara. But as far as styling people, I like to style people kind of like with underground stuff. Like, um, I don't like to too much do a lot of the styling people with like pretty little things or sheen or anything like that. Like, I kind of want to keep it stuff you can't find nowhere else because a lot of times you want to do just funky pieces and then make them simple. So, and it's hard to find funky pieces on places like that. Oh yeah, I feel you like speaking of Sheen, I've seen on your Instagram bio, it says you're the Sheen Campus Ambassador. It's like, how did that opportunity come about? I feel like it really speaks to your fashion influence that you will become a Campus Ambassador. Um, so actually I became a Sheen Campus Ambassador <laughs> simply because I applied. Um, it wasn't hard to be honest. Um, I think I got chose because I do do a lot with fashion and I do shop with Sheen a lot. Um, it's really not much to it, to be honest, because especially on my campus, I can say Sheen is one of those companies that, like, you don't need to be a Sheen ambassador, especially not at HBCU. <laughs> Let's just put it that way, because they don't got nothing for us, but they're cool. They're keeping it real. Yeah. We appreciate that. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's like, really, like, it's just like a girl's like, version of, like, boom, man. Oh, really? Yeah, really. so. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at your YouTube videos and I wanted to ask you about some of your videos. You do like a variety of things from vlogs, lookbooks, facial routines, and et cetera. So like, it seems like you really emphasize self-care. Like how important do you feel like taking care of yourself and loving yourself is essential to like how you feel as a person and as well as like dressing well, like how all that plays into one. So like self-care and fashion goes hand to hand. They do. do you agree with that? Um, yes. I agree with all of that because I feel like in order to be put together in your life, that's the only way like you'll be able to be put together in your fashions. Like if your life a mess, you're gonna be walking around here looking like anything all the time, to be honest. Like you're just gonna be like, I know when I'm having down days, all I want to throw on is like a t-shirt and leggings. And that's just how I know, like, you know, you gotta do some self-care, like. I'm really keen on, you know, getting your self-care Sundays, your facials, spending your time with yourself. And then that way, like, you can build, like, routines for yourself. Then this allows for, then you can take yourself shopping, take yourself on little dates. Now you're building your fashion. Now you want to get cute because you're going outside by yourself, like, 10 out of 10. You make yourself feel better. That's what we just talking about. Oh, we be checking ourselves on day two all the time. I might play sounds he like, yeah, man, I'm not on the day by myself. Thanks. Man. Nah, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> he might call me and tell oh, okay, man, we got to go there one day. You know yeah, what man, we got, we got to come to this spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Most definitely. So you got anything? Man, um, I just want to say again, man, thank you for being on this platform. And just thank you for sharing your story. And you, and you don't notice that you are like inspiring like so many young Black women who want to tap into fashion. Because in our culture, man, we you know like you know, uh, we always think that we gotta we got to like just rely on the fashion like this, it's the fashion industry just like yourself. But you can be self-employed too. So I just want to say thank you for being on this platform. Like thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, most definitely. I want to thank you again. And I think I covered all my questions. Kind of went kind of faster than I thought it was. Uh, but it's all good. We can always create another podcast if you're open to that. Because of course, talking is great these days. And uh, that's really all I got. I want to thank you again, Delaney. You can shout out all your social media, your YouTube, your TikTok, any of that that you have that you wanted people to know. All right. Well, thank y'all once again for having me. I want to say that. And I want to say also, you guys are doing so well. I love what y'all are doing for y'all selves. Like 10 out of 10, you know, putting y'all selves on because y'all got to do it for yourself before anybody else can, period. So, um, but make sure y'all follow me at the delaney.r on instagram um also the delaney.r on youtube and i think if i remember correctly hold on i want to make sure i'm correct because yeah. i get stuff wrong <laughs> especially because i don't be on oh yeah tiktok at laney rob um so make sure y'all tap into me please i'm definitely gonna be doing a lot more coming soon so It'll be some changes real soon. It's going to be some different stuff. Definitely going to tap in with y'all again. So I'll let y'all know. Yeah.
Boy, we can do like an in-person podcast. It'll be way better. We yeah. just in South Carolina. Oh, yeah, North Carolina. Carolina. So we can most definitely put something together. And thank you again. Official site, fashion, fashion, financial literacy, and mindset through the lens of young creatives. And yet again, we bring to you adult creative Delaney Latif. Remember that name. She's probably going to be famous one day. <laughs> the famous, the famous thank you. Period. <laughs> Always new content on the way. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, all that. OPF out. OPF out, family. Peace. Thank you. Make a million cash for you flatline. Make a master plan, watch it backfire. Burn it all down and collect the ashes. Build it back. Respect your passion. Witness to some shit that you shouldn't see.